Hello and welcome to Parasha Express, the weekly fix for spiritual lessons taken from the Parasha. Grab your coffee and let's take a look at the weekly Torah reading. Today we'll be looking at Parasha Kedoshim, which runs from Leviticus chapter 19 verse 1 to chapter 20 verse 27. Enjoy it and don't forget to give us your feedback on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube or via our website. What is love? Is it a feeling? An act? An emotion? Love tends to mean different things to different people. Indeed, the meaning of the English word love is sometimes covered by a variety of different words in a foreign language. Ancient Greek, for example, used four main words for love to distinguish between emotion, friendship, sexual love, and love that family members have for each other. Perhaps the one thing that we may all agree on is that we all need to love and be loved. It's one of our basic human needs. Perhaps Elizabeth Barrett Browning, a 19th century poet, is right when she says, love doesn't make the world go round. Love is what makes the ride worthwhile. Love is our topic this week as we look at not a beautiful romance story, but rather one of the most famous verses, not just of the entire Bible, but of the Torah. In verse 18 of chapter 19 of Vayikra, we read, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's a very simple verse, not hard to understand. And yet, as we dig deeper, we find that it's not quite as simple as we first thought. If we wanted to sum up the whole Torah, we could sum it up in one word, love. Indeed, the famous Hillel, as well as Rabbi Akiva and Yeshua, all claim that the whole of the Torah can be encapsulated in the idea of loving your neighbor as yourself. If we look at the terms of the covenant, the Ten Commandments, we see that the first four concern our relationship with God and how we love Him, and the last six concern how we treat each other. If we love someone, we won't murder them, steal from them, want what they have, or lie to them. If we love God, we won't spiritually cheat on Him by worshipping other gods, nor will we abuse His name. Simple. And yet, it's not so simple. First of all, it's not simple to love, not at all. We all know what it's like to be in relationships where we don't love as we should. Even those who are closest to us, like our partners, spouses or children, we don't always treat with the respect and love that is necessary. Perhaps this idea of loving isn't as easy as it sounds. And then, to return to our verse, there's the question of who is our neighbor and how exactly are we to love him? The rabbis have differing opinions here. The Rashbam claims that whoever your neighbor is, you only have to love him if he's your friend and a good person. The Ramban claims that the verse cannot be taken literally, seeing as it is impossible to truly love your neighbor as yourself. Rashi simply agrees with Rabbi Akiva that it's a fundamental principle, but doesn't elaborate on who it applies to. So who is our neighbor? Can we just love people who love us and that's enough? A similar question was posed one day to Yeshua, the Messiah. The questioner wanted to know exactly who his neighbor was. Yeshua responded by telling a story. Once upon a time, a man was traveling and was attacked by bandits who stole everything and left him for dead. A Levite, who happened to be wandering the same road, came across him, but did nothing to help him. Neither did a wandering Kohen, a priest. Finally, a Samaritan man, a sworn enemy of the Jewish people, came along. He saw the Jewish man, had compassion, bandaged his wounds, and took him to a hospital where he paid for all of his treatment. Yeshua finishes the story by asking his listeners, who was a neighbor to that man? The questioner doesn't like the insinuation, but Yeshua responds to him by telling him and us, you go and do the same. Yeshua's story makes us uncomfortable because it shows clearly that we're supposed to love even our enemy. Not just fellow Jews, not just people who believe or think or dress or eat like us, but everyone. Impossible, I hear you say. And you'd be right. Think about it for a second. If we can barely love those people who are closest to us, how can we love people who hate us? And yet this is exactly the example that Yeshua gives us. Well, we, as humanity, were in rebellion against God, God sent the Messiah Yeshua to die on our behalf. Perhaps it would be the equivalent of me sending my daughter to die in order to rescue a known Palestinian terrorist. Unthinkable, but that is exactly what God has done for us. 
Indeed, perhaps it's a matter of perspective. After all, Yeshua himself says, no one has greater love than he who lays down his life for his friends. Yeshua saw us, those who spat on him and cursed him, as his friends. Now that is love. So how do we love not just our neighbor or our spouse or our children or even our enemies as ourselves? Certainly not in our own strength by trying hard, but we can invite God to give us the same love that he had for us. If we choose to trust in the Messiah and receive this love in our hearts, then we can truly carry out the Torah by loving as we've been loved by God. To conclude, this week we're out of our comfort zone. We have to love in a way we can't possibly imagine, and yet we're also loved in a way we can't possibly imagine. You can love like you're supposed to and experience God's earth-shattering love for you if you allow him to change your life. Are you willing to experience this love that you so desperately long for? That's it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed our parasha espresso. Please don't forget to subscribe to make sure you get the latest episodes. We'd love to hear from you, so please get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or via our website at youthenfearjesus.de.